In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the signage player. The signage player is our dedicated application that runs the presentation. So once you build the presentation with the signage studio, you can push that presentation to unlimited number of remote signage players. The signage player is a cross OS application. This means that you need to build your presentation only once in the signage studio and you can push it to any operating system. We have three different versions of the signage player. We have the desktop version that's designed for Windows XP, Windows 7, 8 and future versions of Windows. We also have the desktop version for Apple OS X as well as the Linux version. Now keep in mind that the Linux version only supports the signage studio up to version 3.0 as it's been discontinued. So if you're starting now with the system we do recommend that you pick either OS X or Windows if you plan on using the signage player desktop version. The Signage Player mobile version was designed for both the iOS, such as the iPad or the iPhone, as well as for Android, for tablets and phones. Both the Signage Player desktop and mobile versions were designed for dedicated playback, so they work very efficiently and they have full remote control so you can manage them from the Signage Studio. On the other hand, the Signage Player web version is used mostly just to preview the presentation and share the presentation with others. With the signage player for the web, you simply can copy and paste the URL to a colleague, for example, and they'll be able to watch the same presentation that was built for both the mobile and the desktop, so you never have to recreate your work. We also support the signage player web version that allows you to embed the presentation inside a website. We do require that your browser supports both Flash and HTML5, and we support the latest version of HTML5 using WebKit. The Signage Controller is another application that runs in conjunction with the Signage Player, both desktop and mobile. It makes sure that the Signage Player does everything that it should. If something goes wrong, the Signage Controller is always able to restart the Signage Player. So you can always rest assured that all your screens will always be up and running. The Signage Player uses a local caching engine for offline playback. This means that if you lose internet connectivity at the location, the Signage Player will continue and run as is, so there's not going to be any interruption to your audience. It also has live preview. This means that the signage player is also embedded inside the signage studio so you can do a live preview and see what you've built before actually pushing it to your remote locations. It fully supports touch screens. It supports different file formats and you can see some of the formats include FLV and MP4, H.264 videos. It supports JPEG and PNG transparencies. It also has a built-in background music player that's independent of the presentation. The signage player takes advantage of GPU hardware acceleration to ensure you always have a smooth presentation. It will use a live socket to connect to our server, but if you have a very tight firewall environment, it's going to actually fall back to HTTP polling to try and also connect to the backend servers. If you wanted to connect live TV via dish or cable, that's also supported and we do have separate video tutorials for that. One of the really cool things about the signage player is that it allows you to do live snapshots so you can see exactly what's running at your remote locations from the signage studio. We often come out with new features and releases and you can simply click on a button and update your remote signage player software revision so you never need to physically have a keyboard or a mouse at your remote locations. The signage player is a secure application that uses RSA authentication and checksum to make sure that it always runs the proper content that you've configured it to. It also requires a username and password to both register the signage player as well as unregister it. And finally, the signage player also supports power savings, so it can turn off your screen or actually shut itself off every day at a specific time. So with that, let's go ahead and show you how to configure and use the signage player. So over here under the signage studio, we'll switch into the stations module, and under the stations, this will be the place where we manage all of our remote signage players. So from our website, you can install the signage player for the different operating system that you want to use. In our case, we'll go ahead and demo the signage player for Windows. Now for Windows, you do need to make sure that you have Adobe Air installed. So go ahead and go to get.adobe.com forward slash air and install the latest version of Adobe Air in Windows. And while Adobe Air is a requirement for Windows and Mac, you do not need to install Adobe Air if you're going to install the signage player on Android or iOS, for example. So we went ahead and installed Adobe Air on our Windows platform and kicked off the installation for the signage player on Windows. So we'll go ahead and go to the wizard and just install the signage player. As soon as the signage player is installed, we're prompted to select the server that we're going to connect to. If you have a private server, you can choose it from here. In our case, we're going to connect to the media cloud and click on connect. And now we need to go ahead and register the signage player with the same username and password as the signage studio account. This will associate the player in the signage studio so we can go ahead and remote control this particular signage player. So switching back to the signage studio, 
you'll notice that right now I don't have any register players since this list right here is empty. Let's go ahead and register the signage player. Go ahead and call this our signage player on Windows. Select the campaign that we want to connect to and the default output and select next from the bottom and register. Now switching back to the signage studio we can now see that the signage player is now showing in our list. We can start remote managing the signage player. We have the description right here and we have all the different parameters including the version of Adobe Air, the version of the signage player, the Windows version. So all this information is available for us for this particular signage player. Now, as I started to explain earlier, the signage player interacts with another component called the signage controller. The signage controller is sort of a watchdog that makes sure that the signage player is always running. But as you can see right here, our controller is not running. So let's go ahead and switch back to our Windows machine and configure the controller. And in fact, here in the signage player panel, you can see again all the app version, the air version, and you can see that our signage controller is not running. Now by default, the signage controller is going to be installed under your Windows startup folder. So anytime you reboot your computer, it will automatically kick in. Now there's a file called signagecontroller.bat that's responsible for kicking off the signage controller. But since this was a fresh install when we've never actually rebooted this Windows machine just yet, the signage controller never kicked in. So let's go ahead and start off manually. We'll go over here to all programs, to the startup folder, and sure enough here is the signage controller.bat. So let's go ahead and kick it off and minimize it. And you can see that now the signage controller is running. Switching back to the signage studio, we'll give it a few seconds. And you can see that now it's switched into running. So we have a green light, which means we have an active socket connection, the controller is running, and we can begin kicking off the presentation. Let's go ahead and click on play over here in the Sunny Studio. And again, play. Switch back to our Windows machine. And you can see that our presentation is running. And so now that we've covered the installation and setup of the Sunnish player, let's talk about some of the remote capabilities. One of the really cool things you can do is you can do live snapshots. So we'll select the Sunnish player and click on the camera icon. And you can do a live snapshot so you see what's actually running on the signage player. Change the zoom and get a little bit better quality. The play and stop will allow you to toggle the playback of the signage player. The music player is a background music player that's independent of the campaign and we do have a separate video tutorial for that. Every once in a while we do release new versions of the signage player with new bug fixes and enhanced functionality and you can click on the check for updates button to check if there's a new version of the currently selected signage player. If there is, the signage player will automatically download the latest version and restart the presentation. So you never have to have a physical keyboard and a mouse connected to your signage player to update for the latest software revision. One important feature of the signage studio is its ability to allow you to make changes to your presentation and save those changes to the server but not necessarily push those changes to the remote signage players just yet. So let's go ahead and show you how this is done. We'll switch over here to timelines and just make a small change. We'll go ahead and associate the screen division to a different channel by dragging and dropping and click on file save. So currently restart stations with changes is checked on, which means that if we click on save, every remote signage player that's connected to this account will restart itself and get the latest changes from the server. However, if you check this off, essentially what you've done is save the changes to the server but have not actually applied it to the remote signage players just yet. And so at any time you can switch back to stations, select any particular signage player and click on the sync button to prompt this signage player to check for latest changes. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on yes. You'll notice that this player will change its status it's going to go into closed and it's red since it's not running. Now it's basically will restart itself and check on the server and see if there are any changes that were made. And you can see right here that it just went ahead and restarted itself. It now checked the server and pulled the latest changes from the server. And so we know that this player is now running the latest version of the presentation. 
If you didn't want to do this manually and actually wanted to schedule a daily check to see if there were any changes made on the server, you can use the reboot conditions, set a daily reboot at let's say 10 o'clock at night. And so this will allow you another way for you to update your remote signage players. The export presentation button will allow you to export the entire campaign into a USB drive. So you can use our sneaker net feature and we do have a separate video tutorial for that. You can use the reboot button to physically reboot your remote signage player. The clear caching will allow you to clear all the data that the signage player has cached locally. So all the FLV videos and images and XML data, all that can be cleared remotely using the clear button. And if you want to delete the station altogether, use the delete button to just remove it from the list of available stations. And so these core features will allow you to fully manage your remote presentation over the web, never physically having to go to your stations or screens and manage your content. Now let's go and review some of the other available options and parameters for managing the signage players. Under general, you can change the campaign. So right now this signage player is running our campaign one. If you wanted to go ahead and set it to run campaign two, simply select the drop down, select campaign two, and again click on file save to push that onto your remote signage player. You'll notice that in a second the status will change and now it's playing the new presentation. We can confirm that by doing a live snapshot and it's running a full screen campaign too. Let's go ahead and verify that, switch to our timelines, campaign two, and sure enough that's a full screen presentation. Under notifications, you can send a notification to your email if the player changes its status under station mode, you can control how the player behaves with other windows. For example, if you want to have the signage player close all other windows and kill the taskbar and really take over the whole operating system, you can run it in real mode. But if you're just messing around with the signage player and you're just testing things around and you don't want it to be really aggressive in closing every possible window around and all the alerts and firewall messages, then you can just operate in test mode. Let's go ahead and switch to reboot conditions. Under reboot conditions, you can set and exceed memory threshold. So if your player is leaking memory for some reason, if you have, let's say, a Swift that's using up more and more memory, you can set the threshold, let's say, for example, two gigabyte. And so anytime two gigs will hit, the player will restart itself to clean the memory. And again, you can also do a reboot daily. So every night at, let's say, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, the player will restart itself. Also, if some sort of an error occurred, you can set the player to restart itself, but you really don't have to since the signage controller will also take care of that. Under power savings, you have three different options. You can turn power savings completely off. Use the monitor option to have the screen go dark between specific days and times. And the station mode will actually allow you to turn the PC that's running the signage player completely off as if you disconnected it from the power and then turn it back on using a BIOS option. We do have a separate video tutorial for power savings. And so as I've demonstrated, you can easily use the Signage Studio Stations module to manage hundreds or even thousands of remote screens without having to physically cater to them. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and thanks for watching.